Now these scholars also, particularly those who were of great spiritual um, achievement, uh, commonly strung together these almost mantra-like formulas to form a whole, a whole unit of devotion. Could take 10 minutes, could take as much as an hour, or even longer. And one of these was known as a wird. Wird is the name for perhaps litany, is the nearest equivalent in the English language. Literally, the word means a watering place. Um, just as the Bedouin in the desert has occasionally to take his, his camels down to the water hole, so also human beings need a weird, a place where they can go regularly to um, refresh and remind themselves by calling to mind and repeating words about their creator. And as with the five prayers, it's believed that there are certain particular times which are especially suitable for reciting a weird. Um, the Quran itself says, mention your Lord abundantly and glorify him in the evening and when the sun rises. So very typically, spiritually minded Muslims, after the dawn prayer is finished, or after the sunset prayer is finished, will stay in the mosque, perhaps for 10 minutes, perhaps for longer, and will recite one of these words. It's a very common practice. Sometimes they will do so individually and silently. Sometimes in some mosques, you'll see people doing them all together. Um, there's a famous hadith that tells us, People will not sit making dhikr of God without the angels surrounding them, mercy covering them, peace descending upon them, and God mentioning them among those who are with him. One of the meanings of this is dhikr in the sense of reminding oneself of the outward laws and rules of Islam, of scholarly activity, but it's also applied by the medieval scholars to invocating, in, invoking God, which is the, the fundamental meaning of the, the word dhikr. Now it's recognized that while it's possible, in some circumstances, necessary to make dhikr or to recite a weird in private, it's generally recognized that human psychology being what it is, and for certain um, less easily uh, expressed spiritual reasons, it's preferable for these things to be done collectively. Um, one of the first to do this was the famous Princess Zubaydah of Baghdad, um, who is said to have assembled all 300 of her servant girls in this sumptuous palace she had in the Abbasid capital. And every day, all 300 of them would recite the Quran together so that to passers-by, uh, the palace sounded like a great beehive. Um, as they put it, its inhabitants garnering the sweet honey of divine remembrance. Now, I'm not able to record um, the servant maids of uh, Princess Zubayda, but what I have got here with any luck, is a recording of a, a contemporary recitation of the Quran. This is from Algeria, which gives you some idea of what you can expect to hear as a form of dhikr after the dawn and sunset prayers in a mosque now. I 
يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب عذابه احد ولا يوثق وثاقه احد يا ايتها النفس المطمئنه ارجعي الى ربك راضيه مرضيه فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جناتي Obviously, in order to hold the collected reciters together, they do it in a very strongly rhythmical way. In fact, listening to the Quran like that is one of the easiest ways of um, hearing the very strong and complex rhythmic patterns that exist in, in the Muslim scripture. So that's a very common uh, sight that you'll see in mosques, particularly in North Africa. In Morocco, in fact, every mosque um, that has a government-appointed imam is required to recite the Quran collectively in this way, one thirtieth of the Quran every day after the dawn and after the, uh, the, the sunset prayers. So this is a form of collective dhikr, uh, reminding oneself, in this case, through the Qur'an of the divine 